Welcome to the Midweek Teas with me, Adele Onyango, where I share some random and not too random thoughts on things. And in this episode, let's dive into this influencer thing. So in some spaces, I have been called an influencer and I remember not really liking that term at first because influencers had a negative perception. People thought they were shallow, they didn't work hard, etc., which is not always the case. That's a generalization of tons of people, which can't be true, right? But with time, I started realizing that the reason I was rejecting that term, because in my mind and for me, influencer as a term, as a concept, just wasn't something I understood. Influencing is an outcome. And so the thing that you do is you create, you create art, you create content. But I didn't think the term influencer was a thing. So I was just like, no, don't call me that. I don't, I don't get it. (laughs) You know, I also felt, and I think I still feel exhausted by constantly being bombarded by what to post, how to post it, what time to post it, how perfect it needs to look. And I quickly realized that this wasn't healthy or normal. And I could feel myself picking out more flaws in my body if I posted something and that piece of content, whatever it was I'd created, didn't perform well. And isn't that crazy? Tweaking everything about you, about how you look, so as to feed absolute strangers online who don't realize that they too are being manipulated by these social media platforms, you know? And I get it. I guess there are personality types that enjoy or even thrive in such spaces. But I quickly realized that that's not me. (laughs) I don't dig it. Mark me absent. Now, I'm a millennial and I am so thankful that I've grown up sandwiched by a life of no social media and that of social media. I feel like that's helped me find balance because I'm very aware that there is life, (laughs) so much life offline, you know. It also helps that I live in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by tons of nature. So I'm often gardening or walking in tea farms and quite a few hot topics online completely pass me by. (laughs) In fact, my partner often has to explain to me certain current affairs, especially global current affairs, because I just haven't seen it. That's not to say that I don't enjoy especially TikTok, but I'm just not as clued in as I was before. And I'll explain why (laughs) in a bit. Now, I remember some time back being a panelist at a very laid back event and one of the panelists brought up a trending gossip story that was happening in Kenya and all the other panelists and the crowd were contributing to the discussion and I was just silent, you know, and when the host asked me (laughs) for my opinion, I genuinely had no idea who they were talking about. I didn't know who these people were before we even got to what they had done. (laughs) And people just couldn't believe that I didn't know who these internet superstars were. But my thing was and still is that not only didn't I know them, but even with that, my life was still pretty full and I wasn't missing out on anything. I feel like, especially when I was in traditional media, it felt like if you weren't online and like, knowing what's trending, being part of what's trending, being at the trending spots and events, it meant that you were nothing, right? And life was not lifing, which is just nonsense. I really don't know. (laughs) I really don't know who started that misconception, right? Because I feel that Quite a few people still believe that. And that's why we want to constantly be in touch with everything that's happening, even to the point where we're overwhelmed. And the things that we're being in touch with are things that are taking from us, not really building us. So I learned a long time ago that I had to be very careful what I expose myself to just 
based on my personality. Whatever I expose myself to directly impacts how I think, how I view myself, how inspired I get. And in an industry that pits personalities against each other, if you're exposed to be it gossip pages with such stories of who do you prefer between personality A or B or whatever, right? That used to happen a lot when I was on traditional radio, those type of articles. And if you are constantly exposed to this, you start to compare yourself with other personalities, you know? And so the things that you believe to be your strengths and you were proud of, you start doubting. And going through that at that point in time made me extremely careful about what I expose myself to. And now bringing it to an online space, I'm extremely careful what pages I follow. Our values have to be aligned. If it's a personality, I follow credible news sites and take breaks from them when need be. I also follow pages dedicated to things that inspire me and that are important to me. So one of my favorite Instagram pages that I follow actually archives photos of African women from way back in the day. Like it's just wonderful to learn about all of these different cultures and traditions from various African communities. I love, 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 love that page. I follow a lot of farmers. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to get my kitchen garden together, but also plants and just like how the earth literally feeds us has always fascinated me. And then the hacks around farming, love it. I follow a lot of psychologists. This is something I've always been interested in. I studied it. Quite a few have helped me gain knowledge on issues I've navigated. I do not follow gossip sites. I dislike that they program us to find joy in people's challenges. Most of the stories that do well on gossip sites are not celebrating anyone. It's like, oh, so-and-so broke up or so-and-so did this to this. You know what I mean? I feel like they're almost programming us not to see each other as humans. And I'm just like, oh, leave me out of that, please. You know, I don't judge those who follow those pages. I just, as I said earlier, it's not for my personality type. Make sense? To each their own. Now, there has been conversations on influencers not speaking up about the protests from June, July, August, you know, what's happening in Kenya. And I love, love, love that especially Kenyans are having this conversation because we've seen it pop up in other countries, let's say in Nigeria. Yeah, other countries around the world have had these type of conversations and I'm glad that it's happening at home. I think it's important to want those that you platform to speak to the issues that are important to you. You start to unpack that perhaps anyone that you're platforming who is silent on these issues is probably not holding the same beliefs or values that you do. Your anger then is evidence of you're uncomfortable with that, which is great. What I do have to ask is, why platform things or people who go against your values? You have the agency to withdraw your support and follow things or people you do not agree with or you feel like are amplifying a value that goes against yours. Maybe you followed someone thinking that something that's important to you was something they are there to or was important to them. And then you realize this isn't the case you de-platform. You have the power. You know, it reminds me of when it comes to issues around mental health. This is such an important thing for me. I actually cannot even be friends with you if you do not try and stay informed on issues around mental health, if you're not empathetic if you laugh at people who are struggling with certain mental health conditions, I'm sorry. Like for me, there's like, I probably wouldn't even do business with you, right? Forget even friendship or following you. And so I know I've been at a social gathering where people I knew were talking very lightly 
about someone battling a mental health condition. And it clicked right then and then to me that my values here are misaligned. And so this is not a space I'm going to be in ever again. You know, I withdrew. <laughs> and so I do not platform in any way, shape or form anything or anyone that goes against my values. And there are things that are very important to me, like the mental health stuff when it comes to gender issues, so sexual violence, Pan-Africanism. Um, I feel like those are things that are super important to me. Back to the conversation on the protests, I worry about the protest convo vis-a-vis -vis influencers who are silent when we spotlight influencers who didn't speak up, etc., I worry that they will start to speak on these issues just to appease you or just to get the numbers. They don't really care about it, you know? And so for me, I don't wait or hang around long enough to even hear the apology or even get angry. When I see that someone I've platformed is misaligned with my values. I just withdraw my support and I keep it moving, you know. And I think especially as Kenyans, we need to be <laughs> very honest about the people and the things that we platform. Because ultimately, the audience, the followers, etc. do have power. You can decide that these are my values and so I will platform A, B, C, D. It's going to sound harsh, but to be honest, we cannot platform nonsense and then get mad that nonsense has nonsense. Thanks for listening to The Midweek Tease, a Legally Clueless Africa production. Episodes go out every Wednesday and you can learn more about us by going to legallycluelessafrica.com.